Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome back to part two of our talk on mucin and cystic neoplasms. And in part two is I'm going to show you another set of cases. I left off with this case before. This case might be a touch unusual that you vaguely see the pancreatic duct. Again, differential, 45-year-old female, location, appearance. This was an MCN, not very tricky. Again, an important thing to remember about MCNs they're typically not going to be aggressive, so you'll simply see at best displacement of vessels, but you're not going to see invasion of vessels. We mentioned before also in venous phase, better than arterial, you'll see the septations, and you can see the septations very nicely shown here on that image. And again, here's some coronal views again showing you septations and a little bit of the 3D rendering, which shows you some subtle enhancement around the rim of the lesion. You know, we often speak about neuroendocrine tumors with rim enhancement. Uh, these MCNs can often have uh, rim enhancement as well, though probably not to the same extent. Another example, lesion by the tail of the pancreas, great location, faint calcification, septations. Septations very nicely showed on the volume rendering. And again, a very nice example of a classic case, female with an MCN. Again, look at the appearance. Now, I mentioned some patients have symptoms, vague abdominal pain. Other patients like this one, incidental finding. And of course, this is the one I'm thinking about an IPMN, but I don't see a pancreatic duct. So location makes me mention MCN in the differential diagnosis. And this was a 2.5 cm MCN with low grade dysplasia. Again, I'll take you through the images which show the uh, very good definition of the cystic lesion, no septations in this case, no nodularity, no enhancement. Or this case, patient with back pain, that's why the patient presented. I don't think the back pain was related to the lesion, but there it is, classic location, body tail junction, subtle rim enhancement, no true septations, no nodularity, no dilated pancreatic duct, this was an MCN. So again, think about the positive findings as well as some of the negative findings as I go through the images. Now, I am showing you a lot of images per case because I really want you to appreciate how the lesion looks in different perspectives from axial to coronal to volume rendering and also to cinematic rendering. Again, many times, the 3D imaging will help you in determining specifically what the lesion is. Another patient, abdominal pain, cystic pancreatic lesion, near the tail, rim calcification, atrophy of the distal gland. To me, that's just a wonderful example of an MCN. It's not an IPMN, it's not a serous cyst adenoma, it's not a lymphoepithelial cyst. I don't know what, it's not a spend tumor because spen tumors have more of a solid component, but also the atrophy of the distal gland uh, with a spen like this, you would see a dilated duct. So again, very helpful findings, which I think allow you to suggest the right diagnosis. So again, when you're thinking of MCNs, they're either going to resect it or do tissue sampling and fluid sampling first. No one's going to say, come back in a year. That becomes a very important point. If you think someone has an IPMN, there's a good chance they're gonna bring them back in a year, which is a typical uh, follow-up recommended by the ACR. But with an MCN, just getting follow-up is not good enough. You gotta figure out what you're dealing with and whether it's a low grade, intermediate grade, or high grade dysplasia. So that becomes very, very important. And you can see that here very, very nicely as well as we go through the lesions. Now, I mentioned before, over 8.5 centimeters is the number one feature for predicting high-grade dysplasia or absolute malignancy. So I'm going to show you some larger lesions. Here's a large one by tail of pancreas, prominent septation, compressing splenic artery and vein. There's a little bit of enhancement in the uh, right side of the lesion at about 3 o'clock. You can see it very nicely here again. And here again. Here's the coronal views, and here's the 3D views. So again, you could think about serous cyst adenoma. You're not going to be thinking about IPMN. MCN should be at the top of your list. And in this case, it was moderate dysplasia. So this patient had surgery, 
and the patient has been doing fine. Another patient, large cystic lesion in this patient with back pain. You can see septations. Sometimes it looks like almost the lesion is coming from near the pancreas rather than from the pancreas. When you look at all of the images, you can tell it's pancreatic. When you look at the venous phase, the septations are really nicely shown. You can see the septations arterially also, but it was better shown on the venous side, which is somewhat classic. So now I'm dealing with a cystic mass septations, not the appearance of a serous cyst adenoma, which you could consider in the differential, not typically a SPEN tumor, surely not an IPMN, surely not a cancer, a typical adenocarcinoma. So I'm going with MCN here. And this is a classic MCN. Based on size, you would have worried about it. And at PATH, this had high-grade dysplasia. So doing a distal pancreatectomy was indeed the right thing. Here's another case. This patient was invasive carcinoma in an MCN. But you can see, look how large this lesion is. Now, what else could you have thought of? First of all, you got to make sure it's the pancreas and not the adrenal or the retroperitoneum. The septations are there, there's some nodularity. Size, again, pushes for the malignancy. If you thought about a serous cyst adenoma, the septations just aren't right. There is more Swiss cheese, particularly when the lesions are large. This is a MCN with cancer. So again, a very nice example, but you have to admit size is the thing that helps you the most. You don't really see a solid component that you would say, aha, Here's the site of malignancy. So just some other nice examples as I do the volume rendering to show you the septations very nicely. Again, venous phase and with 3D processing, you can really see the septations, which you very nicely can see here. Almost when you look at it, you think about hydatid cysts for a second, but the cysts and the daughter cysts are round. So you're not going to have this type of linear type appearance or what I would consider more of a mosaic. And here it is with volume rendering and just a range of views. So I'm showing you just some of the looks. Another patient left up a quadrant fullness and you can see why. There's a mass, 17 centimeters. At about three o'clock, the mass has a solid component. And not surprisingly, this was an MCN with high grade dysplasia. When you look through the lesions, be it axial, coronal, or 3D, that solid component at three o'clock, right? there is very concerning to me. When I see a solid component, I'm always worried about high-grade dysplasia at a minimum or carcinoma. Again, showing this very nicely on some of the MIP imaging, showing it here on the volume rendering. I think from the septations, you're saying MCN. From the solid component, you're really talking about your concern. And of course, this patient would surely get a distal pancreatectomy and a splenectomy. You can see the vessels are not invaded. You can see the splenic artery is stretched. And again, classic things with MCN, unless they're diagnosed really late, where it's obviously an aggressive cancer, you see vessel displacement, but not vessel invasion. Here's another set of images from the venous phase. Another patient, abdominal distension. So it's not a surprise when you have larger tumors, the likelihood of them presenting with symptoms is higher large septations, big cystic lesion. Again, you could think, could this be a splenic cyst? The spleen looked okay. Could this be a retroperitoneal cyst, a mesenteric cyst? But truthfully, mesenteric cysts are well-defined. You usually see the entire pancreatic gland. There's displacement, and there's typically no septations. So this was a mucinous cystic neoplasm, just a really nice example of the pancreas, and it shows very, very nicely there as well. And again, some of the solid components, which would push you to worrying about high-grade dysplasia in this case, which is indeed it was. Again, remember what we said before, the number one feature is size. Over 8.5 cm points to a high-grade dysplasia. Another case, left upper quadrant pain, septations. Looks very similar to the last two cases. Not quite as large, but that same thing. Same appearance you got to be thinking MCN. Now, I have to admit, I'm much better now than ever at diagnosing MCNs because I've looked at so many of them, I now have a better feel of what they look like. It's also important our uh, GI people, our surgeons, hate when the radiologist says 
cystic lesion of the pancreas advised clinical correlation. They know that we can't always be specific, but you have to be good. And in a case like this, be able to say likely MCN. Then they're gonna do fluid sampling. And then from that, likely go to surgery. Some might argue, why don't you go directly to surgery? Because you're not gonna do any pre-op chemotherapy unless you found a malignancy and that's rare. So there is a thought of like, what is the, the value of fluid sampling? Maybe just go right to a distal pancreatectomy and splenectomy, that may be the logical thing to do. So again, very important. Another example, here's another MCN. It's a good case of where sometimes you can't tell, is this a duplication cyst, a mesenteric cyst, a splenic cyst, an adrenal cyst, very large. If it was more solid, you would have thought about something like a, 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 a gist tumor of the stomach. Septations are there, some wall enhancement. Just a really nice example of a very large lesion that was a large cystic, very cystic MCN, nicely shown across the range of images. So we're really showing you, and here is the cinematic. Now we ask, where does the cinematic play a role here? I know the diagnosis, but the question is resection. So you can see here very nicely, there are some collateral vessels. You can see displacement of the SMA and celiac, but the vessels are patent. And you could really show nicely where the tumor is in relationship to SMV and to portal vein. The fact is there's no vascular involvement. There's simply compression. When the surgeons resect the lesion, they should be able to get it off the vessels. So again, 3D imaging is very valuable in preoperative planning. And here's just some more renderings of that lesion with cinematic, with the septations, be it from a coronal or a axial, or in this case, a sagittal perspective. And again, I just love that coronal view, showing you the lesion, then sh making the lesion transparent and showing you the vessels, including displacement of the patient's abdominal aorta. Just a very nice example. And here's one more, again, high-grade dysplasia. Now, sometimes the lesions come off the tail of the pancreas. We said MCNs are more common in the tail, but to me, it's really body-tail junction. When I see lesions coming off, then you're thinking of IPMNs, maybe you're thinking about serous adenomas. This one almost looks like it's sitting off the kidney, or off the spleen, or just the mesenteric cyst. But in the coronal view, it becomes clear it's coming off the tail of the pancreas. Very nicely shown in this example. Maybe a thin septation, but a really nice example. And I mentioned sometimes they're smaller. I think the smaller ones are harder, of course, because you see a small cystic lesion, you're thinking IPMN. If there was an enhancing rim, you think about a cystic neuroendocrine tumor, which are less common than MCNs, but IPMNs are surely much more common. So you would look at this and say, I think it's an IPMN. Again, making the point, location, age, no dilated pancreatic duct, and some relative gland atrophy you should at least consider MCN in your differential diagnosis. And you very nicely can see in the 3D maps, both arterial and venous structures look very nice, look okay. Now it's interesting, we mentioned before how MCNs can have rim enhancement, more commonly seen on the venous phase, and often the enhancement is best appreciated when you do volume rendering or cinematic rendering. In this case, I have to admit, if I see a cystic lesion with rim enhancement, I would even consider a neuroendocrine tumor. Small cystic neuroendocrine tumors are just that, cystic with rim enhancement. Most neuroendocrine tumors are small and hypervascular throughout the lesion, but you can see cystic neuroendocrine tumors, and it can be a tricky diagnosis. And this was a low-grade dysplasia, not a surprise, but I would have probably thought about an IPMN. So I've gone through a number of things, and I just to mention to you this cystic islet cell, uh, which does occur, we, you know, most of the neuroendocrine tumors we see are very vascular and solid, but you can see cystic lesions with rim enhancement, and they very much can look similar to MCNs. Now, if I ask you future directions, I've made some comments. I think AI will be used perhaps to distinguish between the various cystic lesions and perhaps be able to tell the aggressiveness of a lesion. Radiomics may be helpful in a similar regard. 
and liquid biopsies which are being used can be very helpful as well. And there's some work done by Bart Vogelstein and Ken Kinsler looking at the fluid and determining whether or not the lesion long-term can have the potential for malignancy. Now, when you look at CT, which is the main way to go, there's also work with uh, ultrasound, there's also work with uh, MR, but I just would show you this one about how deep learning is everywhere. And this article is deep learning based differentiation between mucinous cystic neoplasms and serous cystic neoplasms using EUS. And again, they had reasonably good results. There's another article, this article by Vipin Dalala, talking about using radiomic features, uh, looking at the different cystic tumors. We've done that as well. The group at Stony Brook with us has done that as well. So that's a real possibility. And this whole idea about radiomics may prove to be very valuable in distinguishing lesions, but also looking at aggressiveness and looking at high-risk lesions. So it's something I think that you need to be paying attention to. It's not happening right now. I mean, a lot of the work is happening. We're doing a lot of the work but the outcomes are not clear at this time. You can see this workflow about radiomics, okay? And people here talk about radiomics for ultrasound and CT and MR and PET. We use it mainly for CT, which is what most people do, but you don't really know how it's gonna come out. So you can imagine uh, this reference from the article making the point that how we look at cystic lesions What's the MCN? What's the, what's the uh, SCN? What's the IPMN? What's the SPEN? We look at certain things from duct dilatation to location of the lesion. We look at septations and nodularity and enhancement patterns and size and patient's age and patient sex. And putting all that together, I think we should do much better. Again, this other work by Leon Sim Nugent and the team looking at uh, really trying to be able to distinguish MCNs based on uh, deep learning is something that is going on, as I mentioned. So concluding then, mucinous cystic neoplasms of the pancreas are rare, but becoming more common. Low-grade tumors that occur predominantly in women in the age 45, again, up to about 27% or so can be malignant. The majority of lesions we see are not going to be malignant. I think that 27% is a high number. It's probably closer to single digits. But again, you can resect these early. You can have very good outcome. Since all MCNs have the potential to transform into invasive carcinomas, it's very important to resect these early. So here is a schematic. And again, uh, you can look at all the different tumors we speak about, but we got to figure out upper left, which are the MCNs. And I think if you do, we're going to do a better job taking care of our patients and our referring physicians are going to be much more happy. And with that, I thank you for this talk on MCNs of the pancreas and hope you find it useful. And surely I have shown you a lot of cases. And with that, have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.